I arrived at the house party with my friends, eager to have a good time. The place was packed with people, and the music was loud enough to make my ears ring. I grabbed a drink and started mingling, laughing and chatting with my friends. As the night wore on, the party got wilder. People started dancing and drinking more, and the music got even louder. I found myself getting caught up in the excitement, but as the hours ticked by, I began to feel a sense of unease. There was something off about the party, something that I couldn't quite put my finger on. It was like a nagging feeling at the back of my mind, telling me that something wasn't right. I tried to ignore it and continue having fun, but the feeling only grew stronger. Eventually, I excused myself to use the bathroom. As I made my way down the dark hallway, I heard a strange noise coming from one of the closed doors. It sounded like scratching, like something was trying to claw its way out. I hesitated for a moment, my heart pounding in my chest. But curiosity got the better of me, and I slowly pushed the door open. What I saw made my blood run cold. There, in the dimly lit room, was a group of people huddled together, their faces twisted in terror. They were all staring at something in the corner of the room, something I couldn't see. As I approached them, I heard a low growling noise coming from the darkness. I froze, unsure of what to do. Suddenly, the thing in the corner lunged at me, its eyes glowing in the darkness. I screamed and stumbled backward, tripping over my own feet. My friends rushed to my aid, but it was too late. The thing had already gotten a hold of me, its claws digging into my flesh. I don't remember much after that, only flashes of pain and terror. But I do know that I'll never forget the feeling of being trapped in that room, surrounded by darkness and the unknown. And I'll never forget the way my friends looked at me afterwards, as if I was no longer one of them. As the thing held me down, I could feel my life slipping away. Its grip was tight, and I couldn't break free no matter how hard I struggled. My friends were screaming, trying to pull the thing off me, but it was no use. It was too strong, too powerful. As the darkness closed in around me, I heard a voice in my head. It was a voice that I didn't recognize, but it was speaking to me, urging me to do something. Fight back, it said. Don't give up. You can do this. I summoned all my strength and began to fight back. I punched and kicked the thing, trying to get it off me. And to my surprise it worked. The thing let go, and I scrambled to my feet, panting and gasping for air. But the horror wasn't over yet. As I looked around the room, I saw that the thing had disappeared. But in its place was something even more terrifying. There on the wall was a message written in blood. We're watching you. I screamed and stumbled backward, tripping over my own feet. My friends rushed to my aid, but I was too shaken up to even speak. What was happening to us? Who or what was behind all of this? And why were they watching us? The rest of the night was a blur of terror and confusion. My friends and I huddled together, trying to figure out what to do next. But no matter how hard we tried, we couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched, that someone was out there, waiting for us. As we left the house party that night, I knew that things would never be the same again. The horror that we had experienced would stay with us forever, a constant reminder that sometimes, the things that scare us the most are the things that we can't see. In the days that followed the party, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was following me, watching me from the shadows. I tried to convince myself that it was just my imagination, but the more I tried to ignore it, the more intense the feeling became. I started to notice strange things happening around me. My phone would ring, and when I answered, there was no one on the other end. I would receive strange, cryptic messages from unknown numbers, and when I tried to call them back, the lines were dead. One day, while walking home from school, I saw a figure lurking in the shadows. It was too dark to make out any features, but I could feel its eyes on me, watching my every move. I quickened my pace, my heart pounding in my chest. But no matter how fast I ran, the figure always seemed to be one step behind me. When I finally reached my front door, 
I fumbled for my keys, my hands shaking with fear. I could hear the figure getting closer, its footsteps echoing in the silent street. Finally, I managed to unlock the door and stumble inside, slamming it shut behind me. I collapsed on the ground, gasping for air, tears streaming down my face. I knew then that I had to do something, that I couldn't keep living in fear. I needed to find out who or what was behind all of this, and put an end to it once and for all. And so, I began to investigate. I combed through old newspaper articles, searched online forums, and even talked to people who claimed to have experienced similar things. What I found was even more terrifying than I could have ever imagined. There was a secret society, known only as the Watchers, who were known for their sinister practices and their ability to control the minds of their victims. They had been operating in secret for years, preying on unsuspecting people and using them for their own nefarious purposes. And now, it seemed that I had become one of their targets. I knew then that I had to act fast, before it was too late. But as I looked out the window, watching the shadows dance in the moonlight, I knew that my battle with the Watchers was only just beginning. With my newfound knowledge of the Watchers, I began to take precautions. I installed security cameras around my house, and made sure to never go out alone at night. But no matter how much I tried to protect myself, I couldn't shake the feeling that they were always watching me. One night, as I was getting ready for bed, I noticed something odd on the footage from one of my cameras. It was a figure, dressed in all black, moving stealthily through my backyard. My heart pounded in my chest as I watched the figure creep closer and closer to my house. I quickly shut off all the lights, hoping that the darkness would conceal me from its gaze. But it was no use. The figure seemed to know exactly where I was, and it wasn't long before I heard the sound of glass shattering. I knew then that they were inside my house. I grabbed a baseball bat and slowly made my way down the stairs, my heart racing. I could hear them moving around, searching for me. Suddenly, I saw a shadowy figure dart across the hallway. Without hesitation, I charged after it, swinging the bat wildly. But when I reached the spot where the figure had been, there was no one there. I turned around, ready to defend myself but it was too late. Something slammed into my head, and everything went dark. When I came to, I was tied to a chair, surrounded by the watchers. They were all dressed in black robes, their faces hidden behind masks. One of them stepped forward, his voice cold and menacing. We've been watching you, he said. We know all your secrets. And now you're going to do exactly what we tell you to do. I tried to break free, but the ropes were too tight. I was helpless, at their mercy. And then, I heard a voice in my head. It was the same voice that had spoken to me at the party. Don't give up, it said. You can do this. With renewed strength, I struggled against my bonds, until finally, they gave way. I charged forward, swinging the bat wildly, and managed to knock out several of the watchers. But it was no use. They were too powerful, too organized. As they closed in on me, ready to finish the job, I knew that this was it. This was how it was going to end. But then, something strange happened. A blinding light filled the room, and the watchers began to scream and writhe in agony. And then, everything went black. When I woke up, I was back in my own bed, surrounded by my friends. They told me that they had found me unconscious in my house, and that they had no idea what had happened. But I knew the truth. I had been in a battle with the Watchers, and somehow, I had emerged victorious. As I lay there, recovering from my injuries, I knew that I would never be the same again. The horror that I had experienced had changed me, had left a mark on me that would never fade. But I was alive. And that was all that mattered. Despite my victory over the Watchers, I knew that my battle with them was far from over. They were a powerful organization, and they wouldn't stop until they had taken revenge on me. I began to notice strange things happening around me again. My phone would ring in the middle of the night, and when I answered, there was no one on the other end. 
I would receive cryptic messages from unknown numbers, taunting me and threatening me. I tried to ignore them, but the fear was always there, lurking in the back of my mind. One day, I received a message that was different from the others. It was an invitation to a secret location on the outskirts of town. I knew that it was a trap, but something inside me compelled me to go. I needed to confront the watchers to put an end to this once and for all. As I drove out to the location, I felt my nerves start to fray. I had no idea what was waiting for me, and the thought of facing the watchers alone was almost too much to bear. But I pressed on, determined to see this through to the end. When I arrived at the location, I was surprised to find that it was an abandoned warehouse. The door was locked, but I found a way to break in. Inside I could hear whispers and footsteps, but I couldn't see anyone. I crept forward, my heart pounding in my chest. And then I saw them. The watchers, all gathered in a circle, performing some sort of dark ritual. I knew that I had to act fast. I charged forward, swinging my bat, and managed to knock out several of them. But then, the lights went out. I was surrounded by darkness, with no idea where the watchers were. I could hear them moving around me, their whispers growing louder and more menacing. And then, I felt something cold and sharp at my neck. Don't move, a voice hissed in my ear. Or I'll slit your throat. I knew then that I was done for. I had come too far, and now, it was all going to end in bloodshed. But then, I heard the same voice that had spoken to me at the party, the voice that had helped me to defeat the Watchers before. Believe in yourself, it said. You can do this. With newfound strength, I twisted around and swung my bat with all my might. There was a sickening crunch, and then silence. When I opened my eyes, the Watchers were gone. The warehouse was empty except for me. As I stumbled out into the daylight, I knew that my battle with the Watchers was finally over. But the horror that I had experienced would stay with me forever, a constant reminder of the darkness that lurked just beneath the surface of our world. As I stumbled out of the abandoned warehouse, panting and sweating, I felt a sense of relief wash over me. It was finally over. The Watchers were gone, and I had emerged victorious. But then, something caught my eye. There was a figure standing at the edge of the parking lot, watching me. It was a woman, with long blonde hair and a pale face. I couldn't quite make out her features, but something about her seemed familiar. As I started to approach her, she disappeared, melting into the shadows like a ghost. I brushed it off as my imagination playing tricks on me, and got into my car. But as I started to drive away, I saw her again. This time, she was standing in the middle of the road, blocking my path. I slammed on the brakes, but it was too late. I hit her with a sickening thud, and the car screeched to a halt. Shaking with fear, I got out of the car and rushed to her side. But when I looked down, I saw that she was already dead. Her face was twisted in a grotesque expression of pain, and blood was pouring from her head. I tried to call for help but my phone was dead. I was alone, stranded in the middle of nowhere with a dead body. As I sat there, staring at the woman's lifeless body, I began to feel a sense of unease. Something about her death didn't add up. It was almost as if she had been planted there, as if someone had wanted me to hit her. And then it hit me. The woman looked exactly like the mysterious woman from the party, the one who had given me the clue to defeat the Watchers. I started to piece it together in my mind. Was she working with the Watchers all along? Was she the one who had set me up? But then, another thought occurred to me. What if the Watchers weren't the only ones after me? What if there was another organization, one that was even more powerful and sinister? As I sat there, in the middle of nowhere, with the dead body at my feet and the specter of danger looming all around me, I knew one thing for sure. My nightmare was far from over. I frantically searched the woman's body, hoping to find some sort of clue that could lead me to the truth. And then I found it. A piece of paper, folded neatly in her pocket. It was a map, 
with a location circled in red. Without hesitation, I got back in my car and followed the map to the circled location. It led me to an old, abandoned mansion deep in the woods. As I cautiously approached the mansion, I saw movement in the shadows. Someone was watching me. I pulled out the knife I had taken from the watchers, and slowly made my way towards the mansion. Inside I found a dark room, filled with strange equipment and gadgets. And there, sitting in a chair, was the woman from the party. But this time, she was alive. I see you've found my little hideout, she said with a smirk. Well done. You're smarter than I gave you credit for. What do you want from me? I asked, my voice shaking with fear and anger. I want you to join me, she said rising from her chair. I want to show you the true power of this world. Together, we can rule it all. I backed away, my mind racing. This woman was clearly insane. But as I turned to leave, I felt a sharp pain in my back. I fell to the ground, and everything went dark. When I woke up, I was tied to a chair, surrounded by the woman and her minions. She cackled with glee as she approached me, holding a syringe filled with a strange liquid. This will make you see things in a whole new way, she said, as she injected me with the liquid. For a moment, everything went black. And then I saw it. The world around me shifted and twisted, becoming something new and terrifying. The woman and her minions were no longer human. They were monsters, twisted and grotesque. But I wasn't afraid. In fact, I felt a sense of power coursing through me. I stood up, and the ropes that had bound me fell away. And then I attacked. I don't know how long the fight lasted. It could have been minutes or hours. But when it was over, I was the only one left standing. As I stumbled out of the mansion, covered in blood and bruises, I felt a sense of relief wash over me. It was finally over. But I knew, deep down, that I was never going to be the same again. The horror that I had experienced had changed me, and I would carry it with me for the rest of my life.